Hello and welcome to this week's edition of BS with AJ. This week I'm going to be showing you how to make your very own baby crib from walnut from start to finish. Stick around. I found this walnut in a pile of wood that I had bought at an auction. It was just a mixed pile of rough cut lumber. I went and got it all planed down and it looks really nice so I'm glad I found it. Uh, it looks like it's going to be just enough to make this crib and it's going to look great. Alright our first step is going to be making our four corner post. I found a 2 by 6 piece of walnut and what we're going to do is cut them all down to 36 inches and then I'm going to rip it down to 3 inches. We're going to glue two of those together to make one post. That's, that way we have a 3 by 3 post on all four corners to make sure it's good and strong. All right, now that we got them planed down nice and smooth, we're going to go ahead and rip these down to three inches wide. All right, your next step is to go ahead and set your legs up like you're going to glue them. Now what I've done here is I've gone ahead and I've marked out where I'm going to put my screws. I came two and a half inches from the edge and from that edge down there and then I went ahead and split it into three sections so I can put two more sets of screws here. So there's going to be eight screws on each of these boards to make sure it's held good and tight together. I've marked mine uh, three quarters of an inch from the edge here and I made sure to make them all the same so, that all, so it's going to look nice. What I'm going to do is I'm going to counter bore this three eighths of an inch in and I'm going to use a dowel rod to cover it up after I put the screw in there so, you don't, so the screw is not visible. Alright, I've got my drill press set up with a 3 8 inch drill bit. I've got a piece of tape here marking 3 8 of an inch from the bottom of the drill bit. And we're going to go ahead and drill each one of these spots that we marked earlier in all of these boards. That's going to be where our uh, dowel rods are going to go. Alright, now we're going to start cutting the wood for our headboard and our footboard. We're going to cut these to 32 inches, which is a slightly oversized to make sure that everything lines up right. We're going to come back and trim it down to 30 inches after we get it all glued up and everything's square. Alright, now that we have all of our boards lined up the way we want them, we squared up one edge. And what we're going to do, we measured from this end down two and a half inches. And then we measure from the far end, two and a half inches in. That's where we're going to put our dowel rods. And then we're going to measure in between there and divide it into three sections to put two more dowels in. So we got them spaced nine inches apart. All right, now what we're going to do is use our doweling jig that we made in a previous video and we're going to go ahead and drill our holes for all the dowels that we're going to put in here.
if I don't know if you can see this or not, but I've got three lines marked here. And I'm going to explain that to you here in just a second. Uh, we, went, we went ahead and made our headboard and our footboard bigger than we needed to. And the reason is, you always want to make something bigger, so you can always cut it down. It's a lot easier to cut down than it is to add to it. So we made it bigger than we needed. And the other reason is because whenever you glue them up, there's a chance that you're not going to line up a flush edge here. As you can see, mine's not exactly flush. So what I did, I took my square here, and I lined it up, and I came as close to the edge as I could where all the line or all the boards here were even. And I went ahead and marked that line. I did the same thing to the other side. Now, I measured between those lines, and I need 30 inches is the height that I need on this. So I measured that line and I subtracted it from 30 and divided it into two sections to make sure it's even on each side. And then that's when I marked my cut line. Now the third line here, I marked that because I'm going to be using this guide here to uh, use my skill saw with. It's going to make sure that I cut a straight line. It's going to make sure it looks good and even. So I measured from the edge of the guard of the skill saw over to the blade. And that ended up being an inch and three eighths on mine. So that's where I'm going to put this guard at. So that way I mark, I can cut this line and it be straight and good. All right, now that we got the height of this cut down to 30 inches, we need to cut the width down. And uh, I need to cut it down to 28 inches. So the way I did this, I found the center of this. I went ahead and measured from each side, found the center, and basically I needed to cut off eight inches. So I cut four inches off of each side. So I measured in four inches and four inches over here and I drew my cut lines. I'm going to use the same guide so I measured over an inch and three-eighths for my guide to set on there so I could cut it straight. Now the reason I did it on both sides instead of just one is because I got all these different boards here glued together and all of them have different wood grains and everything. If I cut it all off of one side then there would be one part that would be really short and it just wouldn't look right. So I decided to go ahead and do it from both sides so there's going to be a short piece on each side so it looks more even. Alright, to fill all the holes that we drilled in our legs to screw the two pieces of wood together, we're going to use a plug cutter instead of dowel rod, so that way we can use the same wood and it's not going to stick out like a sore thumb. Now that we have all of our plugs cut, what we're going to do is go ahead and glue them in. So we're going to take some glue, put a little bit on here, put it into place, and drive it in with a wooden mouth. is take this Japanese saw, it's real, real flimsy, and we're going to go ahead and cut through each one of these, make sure they're flush, and then we're going to sand them smooth. Now we're going to use our router table and a 3 16 inch round over bit to round over all the edges on our legs.
right, we're getting ready to put our headboard and our footboard together. So what we've done here, we got them lined up the way we want to. We have this flush with the inside. This is going to be the inside of the bed where the mattress is going to butt up against it. And what we're going to do is we're going to put dowel rods here like we did to, con to put all these boards together. So I came down one inch, put a mark, and I come up two inches to avoid a screw I had here and put a mark. And then I measured nine inches in between them. So I've got four dowel rods on each side. And now we're going to go ahead and use that jig I showed you how to make in a previous video. And we're going to go ahead and drill it and go ahead and put the dowels in and glue it together. Alright, now what we're going to do is cut the top and the bottom rails for the sides of the crib. They need to be 58 inches long, but we're going to cut them a little bit longer just to be sure we have enough. After we rip them down to size, we'll cut them all to the exact length we need. Alright, now we're going to go ahead and rip this down into four pieces that are two and an eighth inches wide. Alright, now that we have them all ripped down to the width we need, we lined them up and we squared them up on one end and we're going to go ahead and trim them down to the exact size we need now. That way none of them, none of them is a little bit shorter or longer. They're all exactly the same length. Alright, now we're going to start ripping these boards down to an inch and a half wide. These are going to be our railings for each side. We're going to cut them down to one and a half inches by 30 inches. We're going to need a total of 30 of them. To the far right, you can see I've got a block set up. I'm using that so that way I don't have to keep measuring every time I go to cut one of these boards. Since I have to cut 30 of these 30 inches long, it's a lot quicker than having to mark it and then set it up and then mark it and set it up. That way I can just slide the board right up to it, make a cut, and just keep going. It's a lot faster and it'll help a lot. Alright, now we're going to take all the rails that we cut today and go ahead and run them over our 3 16 inch roundover bit to make sure that they don't have any sharp edges on them. what we're going to do, we're going to go over all these edges and look for rough areas like this right here where the saw blade kind of caught it weird. And instead of using a belt sander to sand all this out, we're going to be using a card scraper because it's going to get it done quicker and not as messy.
All right, now we're gonna mark the lines where we're gonna put the center of our rails to make sure they're evenly spaced. All right, now that we have all of our lines marked, as you can see, what we've done here, we marked the center of our rail. So we're gonna have an inch and a half wide rail and they're gonna be two inches apart. So every three and a half inches, we found our starting point and then we went three and a half inches to each center of each one all the way down to make sure they're all evenly spaced. All right, the next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna take our little square here and we're gonna mark five eighths of an inch on both sides. That's where our two screws are gonna go on each one of these to hold in our railing. Alright, now what we're going to do, we're going to go ahead and pre-drill these holes that we're going to fill with plugs here later. But this is where all the screws are going to go to hold our railings together. So, we've got a 3 8 inch drill bit and we've marked it with a piece of tape at a quarter of an inch. So we're going to take this and drill down through here until we reach this piece of tape through each one of these marks that we just made. Alright, now we're going to start putting this together. Now we already have our center marks here for our holes where we marked them earlier. So I went ahead and transferred them over to the edge here all the way down on both of the top and the bottom boards here. And then I went ahead and marked the center line on each of the rails. And I'm going to go ahead and use that to line it up to get it pretty close and then I'm going to use my square to get it perfect. Now we're going to cut out all the plugs we need to fill all the holes for all the screws we just put in. There ends up being 120 all together, so this is going to take some time. Alright, now that we have all of our plugs cut, we're going to go ahead and take some glue, put a little bit on them, and drive them in with our mallet. Now that the glue's had time to dry, we're going to take our Japanese saw and go ahead and cut all these off flush.
Now to put our headboard and our footboard together with our side rails, we're going to go ahead and drill some holes here. The first one you're going to measure from this end to three quarters of an inch. The second one's going to be from this end to two and an eighth. And then we're going to come over one inch from this side and we're going to mark that. And that's where our screws are going to go. Alright, now instead of measuring to try and line these holes up and risking it being off a little bit, what we're going to do is just set it up here with it where it's supposed to be, make it flush on this side, and then we're going to take an eighth inch drill bit, put right in that bottom mark that we just made. Without moving it, we're going to come back to the other one, the back one here, and do the same thing on just the bottom one for now. Now that we have it marked with an eighth inch drill bit, and we'll come back and drill that out the right size here in a little bit. All right, this is the setup we're going to use to attach our rails to our head and our footboard. We're going to use a quarter of 20 by 40 millimeter bolt. And as you can see, it's darker colored, so it ain't going to stick out as much. And we're also going to be using a quarter 20 screw-in insert nut. And we're going to drill a 5 16 hole for this one. And it's got a little Allen head on the front. We're going to use that to screw it into the wood on our post. And then we're going to take a quarter inch drill bit and drill through our side rails so that way this can go through with no problem. Now for our screw and -in insert nut, what we've done, we've taken our 5 16 drill bit and put tape down here a little past 3 quarters of an inch. That's how long this is. We wanted to set in just a little bit, so I made it just a, just a hair more, like a sixteenth more. And we're going to just take it and drill it right up to that line. together you're going to want to measure to make sure it's square so we're going to go from one corner to the opposite corner I've got 65 and an eighth and what you want to do to check and make sure it's square is to go to the opposite corner and see what it measures all right I've got 65 and an eighth as well so it's perfectly square now once you got it square, that, then we're going to come in and drill our other hole that we had marked on each of these. Alright, now we're going to start working on the frame on the inside that's going to be holding the baby bed up. I've decided to use oak for this because it's not going to be seen anyway and because it's a lot cheaper and I have a lot more of it. So the first thing we're going to do is go ahead and rip this down to two inches. All right, we're going to start by cutting two pieces at 28 and a quarter inches. We're going to cut two more pieces down to 50 and 3 eighths. Right, we're going to take our long boards and put them three inches from the edges. Now we're going to cut two more pieces down to 19 and 15 16.
All right, now we're going to take those pieces and put them in the middle here. We've divided it into three equal spaces. It ends up being pretty close to 17 inches. Alright, so we're going to measure up 13 and a half inches and we're going to come over from the side 2 inches and where those two points meet we're going to drill a 5 16 inch hole about 3 quarters of an inch deep. That's where we're going to put our screw in insert nuts and we're going to do this to all four posts. Alright, now we're going to go ahead and drill the holes that we need for our screws to hold our inside frame piece that actually holds the mattress up. We've went down an inch and a half and we centered it up here at one inch. And we're going to mark this on all four corners and we're going to drill this out with a 5 16 inch drill bit. Alright, we're going to go ahead and put another set of screw in insert nuts to make it adjustable because after five months we need to drop the mattress down quite a bit. So what I've done is I measured off the bottom five and a half inches and then we came over from the side the same two inches on all four posts. So that way we can just drop it down and screw it into there. All right, now that we have it bolted in place, all we have left to do is cut us a piece of plywood that's 52 by 28 inches. And we're gonna just slide it right on top here. We'll drill two holes to make sure we can grab it pretty easily and pull it out. And then all we got left to do is finish this wood. All right, now to finish our baby crib, we're gonna be using 100% pure tongue oil. We're not gonna use any solvents to cut it down or anything like that. We're gonna put it on straight. Uh, to tell you a little bit about tongue oil, it's 100% natural. You get it by pressing the seeds from the nut of a tongue tree. And basically tongue oil, it hardens up upon exposure to air and the resulting coat has a transparent and a really deep, almost wet look to it. So it looks really great and we're hoping it's gonna make this project just look awesome. All right, tongue oil can be applied with a cloth, a brush, or most any applicator suitable for oil-based paint. And with really porous wood and stuff, you're gonna to wanna to put more than one application on it. Uh, it says on the back here, it's not necessary for previous applications to dry before applying more. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna let it soak in with a first coat today, put quite a bit on it, wipe off any of the excess afterwards, and then we're gonna come back tomorrow and put on another real thick coat. All right, as you can see, I've only got three of the four sides set up on this, and the reason I'm doing this is so that I can get on the inside and get all the inside done first. Be sure and wear gloves and safety glasses while you're applying this. You don't want this stuff to splash up in your eyes, and you really don't want it to get all over your skin either.
right, now we've got three coats of the pure tongue oil on here, and we've let it set for 40 minutes to go ahead and soak into the wood really good. Now we're going to go ahead and take a clean cloth and wipe off all the excess, and we're going to let it dry overnight. Now we've allowed the oil to soak in for a little over 24 hours. We're going to come back and put another coat of it on there, but instead of using a rag, we're going to be using a piece of 600 grit sandpaper. We're going to put a little bit on and we're going to sand it smooth as we're doing it. Now that we've let it set and soak in for about 40 minutes, we're going to take a clean dry towel, wipe off all the excess oil, and we're going to let it set for about 48 hours and it should be completely done. you enjoyed this week's project be sure to like share and subscribe if you have any good ideas for other projects that you'd like to see leave me a comment and I'll get to it uh, consider supporting us on patreon so we can do bigger and better projects <laughs>